Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Today, we'll be discussing how Jitterbit is helping to transform the way we market, sell, and support products and services in the digital era. More specifically, we'll also walk you through an example of how you can easily get uh, Microsoft AX connected to other systems and platforms. My name is Lee Batista with Jitterbit, and I'm joined uh, by Scott Halpany, our senior sales engineer here at Jitterbit. Uh, and before we begin our presentation, let me go through a few housekeeping tips for you. Uh, today's session is being recorded. We will send a link to view that recording to the email address you registered with for today's session. Also, if you have any questions at any time during the presentation or the demo walkthrough, feel free to ask it uh, by using the questions area in the panel on your right side for the GoToWebinar interface. Uh, we'll try and answer all those questions as time permits at the end of the session. Uh, and if there's any questions that we need to follow up with you uh, directly or ones that are a little more uh, detailed, uh, then after the session, we'll make sure that we uh, contact you and uh, try and uh, schedule a follow-up session. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and get right into it. So we are in the midst of a digital revolution, and this is the convergence of sort of new digital technology that's already transformed our business and, and our daily lives. So social, mobile, analytics, cloud, all these technologies are contributing to what Gartner Research believes will initiate more changes in business over the next five years than was experienced in the last 50. Companies and organizations now face a digital imperative to meet customers where and when they want to do business. And this transformation in business principles is estimated to be worth close to $20 trillion by 2020. Uh, and again, that's as predicted by Gartner. So as you see, there's a fundamental change in what's driving the increase in this digital value opportunity. Uh, and in this drive to change over the next five years, 75% uh, of enterprise businesses will attempt this digital transformation, but only 30 will succeed. Uh, to quote Forrester Research, in the next five years, you'll either become a digital predator or you will become the digital prey. So more and more businesses find themselves following the paths of, as we showed you those examples of like a, uh, you know, a, an Airbnb for that, for hotel reservations, or uh, Netflix uh, versus Uber versus Blockbuster, which is always one of the uh, classic examples there. Uh, if you look at one of the use cases for something like Uber instead of like Yellow Cab or any of the other uh, transportation services, Uber's not really offering anything different in terms of service. You're still getting into a vehicle that takes you where you want to go. Uh, the key difference, though, is the digital connectivity there and that seamless experience of the people, the data, and the information for the service itself, bringing you to that door-to-door uh, -door mapping and all the, even the monetary transaction happening on a digital platform. This is something that Ray Wang of Constellation Research agrees with, stating that the best companies will put connectivity above all else. Those are the 30% of the companies that will succeed. More important than the apps themselves is where the data lives and how you'll be able to connect that to each other. So that question of how is what smart businesses, smart businesses will look to quickly solve. With the growth of these digital and data services, attention has to be given to these endpoints now. Uh, with all the connections that can easily be addressed uh, before you grow into, before it grows into a monumental undertaking of resources, of budget, uh, you know, and more importantly, of time for that. Uh, because within the next five-year window, as you can see on this this slide here, we can see it all coming together with. Uh, 50 billion connected devices contributing to pervasive growth of the Internet of Things. With companies investing, uh, sorry, 75 billion uh, for the Internet of Things. With companies investing six times as much budget into uh, cloud solutions with uh, analytics and uh, AI and machine learning, you know, contributing to the growth of a $125 billion industry. Uh, and of course, with companies still spending more than half of their IT budgets maintaining legacy or on-premise solutions, uh, these companies that um, are still doing that are the ones that are not really in a digital era fully, but more so in like a hybrid world. So with, uh, with Jitterbit, we try and help you by breaking this down to sort of a three-pillared or three-tiered system to think about, with the first pillar being the platform uh, to, en to enable this. And for us, that platform is Harmony. And Jitterbit Harmony is a single, unified, multi-tenant platform that allows you to build, manage, and run all your integrations in a centralized location, providing open connectivity to thousands of businesses uh, and business apps uh, and, of course, the APIs that businesses will have for those apps. 
And the power of that platform is really reflected in the numbers here. You look at the, uh, on the slide. Uh, from the bookends on either side, you can see that Harmony connects over 140,000 endpoints for over 50,000 users with a 99.9% .9 uptime across six global data centers. And then in the middle, you can see that uh, the sheer volume of what we can handle uh, for the platform with over one and a half million operations or digital processes happening daily. So this single design experience that we offer with Harmony uh, also is that single management view that can handle any and all of your business needs for the digital world. The second pillar or tier here, what we really want to emphasize is that you should look to scale out and not up. Um, one of the things for modern integration platforms is that you should be able to handle the millions of records uh, without missing a beat. Uh, scaling up isn't really the challenge for what you look for in a solution. It's, it's actually kind of expected. Uh, scaling out and not limiting uh, yourself to only a few channels is, is more of the thing to look at with uh, in enabling a smaller group of, uh, instead of limiting yourself to a small group of developers, you want to try and open it up to more and more people to be able to build integrations and not have to rely on that small group or it's, uh, strictly on an IT department. Um, for companies that you know want to ask how a department manager or a business analyst or someone who's not really IT or tech savvy can get themselves connected to the strategy, part of how we designed Harmony uh, was for the citizen integrator or your typical end user to be able to do that. Uh, and with that, sort of the ease of use of Harmony uh, that's important uh, you know, to us and proven through our user community uh, if you look at this slide, sort of left to right, you know we have 75% of organizations going live in less than a month. And more importantly is how quickly they can continue to make those connections, whether it's the second or the 50th or 100th integration they're building. Um, all those successive ones really average about two days for them to, to build and complete, which is you know great for, uh, for being efficient and uh, expedient with all that you want to tackle for your IT issues and business issues overall. Uh, and then... When you look at the, uh, the idea, oh, again, of speed as the currency of the cloud, uh, we really want to try and embrace that for making sure that your business can continue to run at the speed you want it to run on, and then still be sort of that lean and mean operation, which is that last one of um, enabling more people to build those integrations and the ongoing resources needed to manage it for Harmony is extremely low, uh, with 75% of our customers uh, having less than two people really managing the Harmony platform, which is a, you know, a, a great win for, uh, for everyone that uses it. Uh, and lastly, for the third pillar, uh, we are very invested in uh, the success of our customers. Uh, we stand by the philosophy to meet you where your business lives, addressing those business problems that you're facing, and not just the technical side or sort of that plumbing uh, um, under the floor and behind the walls to get that data in and out. We're focused on your success and your success uh, to your customers. And with that, you can see that we're ranked number one across all cloud uh, enterprise level cloud integration vendors as recognized by G2 Crowd. If you don't, are unfamiliar with G2 Crowd, they're like the Yelp of enterprise uh, listings. Uh, we have a 97% renewal rate uh, from all our customers with nearly all of the users getting an ROI within months uh, with many customers reporting back upwards of uh, 30x on their initial return on investment. So. Again, we're very uh, vested in making sure that you are successful with the platform, very hands-on approach, uh, and we have great people and personnel uh, available to make sure that you can find the business success that you need from something like a, uh, a integration platform that we offer with Harmony. And with that, uh, we'll transition over to our demo portion with uh, Scott Halkney leading us there. Uh, Scott, I'm going to pass you the controls. Great. Thanks, Lee. There we go. Okay, can you see me? Sorry, okay. I, I muted myself. Yes, <laughs> yes, we can see <laughs> you. Okay. Just want to make sure before I dove in that uh, that everybody could see me. So, uh, so real briefly, um, uh, like uh, Lee did mention, I'm a, a sales engineer here at Jitterbit, um, and I'll be walking through the uh, Microsoft AX uh, integration um, through our Jitterbit Harmony Studio. So uh, all I want to do is run through a couple of slides, kind of walk you guys through the use case of what we're going to show, uh, and then we'll dive in uh, to the product, uh, show what the product does, and then uh, we'll hopefully have some time for questions at the end. So first things first, um, what we're going to do 
uh, using the platform is uh, we're going to move some customer data from AX into Tableau. Um, then I'm going to walk through uh, sort of a wireframe of the integration uh, itself uh, in Jitterbit uh, Studio, um, utilizing our integration wizard. So you can basically wireframe an integration up in, in a matter of minutes and then you know, go into your customization specific to what you need. Uh, then I'll go into uh, you know show you what on the pl uh, platform, uh, how you manage uh, you know your activities, uh, the server users, all that type of thing. Just so you guys ha have an understanding of how to administer the platform, um, not just build the integrations themselves. Uh, so the use case I'm actually going to show today, I'm going to move some customers from uh, AX into you know a SQL Server, which which is a data warehouse. Um, once I'm in that data warehouse, I'm going to take that data, uh, and because you know our particular department needs to see uh, data in Excel so they can import that into Tableau, we can get data into Tableau other ways. But in this case, we're utilizing this as the uh, as the in input to the Tableau. So we'll export that data from the data warehouse into the Excel, uh, and then we'll take a look look at that uh, data in Tableau, uh, so we can see what that looks like. Go ahead and shrink this down. And then I'll go into the Jitterbit Studio. So briefly, I'll just kind of run through what we're doing here. Um, this is the integration that's actually going to drive the data all the way from uh, AX, in this case, to SQL Server, and then drive that into the Excel file for Tableau to pick that up. Um, and then we have some error handling over here. So if something fails out, um, it'll actually cancel out uh, on that particular step. In this case, this runs well, but if you did have a situation where your, uh, you know, your processes needed to air out, we do have that error handling built in here just for, for posterity. So briefly, um, you can see here, this is the integration inside of the Jitterbit Studio. Um, and then this, this is the operations that we basically built and then chained together into an orchestration in this case. Um, if I scroll down a little bit here, I'll show you what the AX uh, connector looks like, uh, just so you guys have an understanding. So it's basically a pre-built connector inside of Jitterbit that you put in your parameters specific to uh, your server, and that's how you test uh, and, and connect to your endpoint. So I'll go ahead and test that. You guys can see that connection uh, connect and succeed. And I'll close that out. And then also the functions here. So basically, you can build new functions specific to uh, whatever your web service use cases are. Uh, in this case, I'm just using customers, but you can do sales orders, you can do invoicing, whatever you need to do in those cases. So what I'll do here, I'm going to kick this off, and I'm actually going to go into my database and show you what that looks like. So right now we've got some data in there, and if I hit there, hit refresh, you can see that it actually cleared the data out. And if I keep hitting refresh, it's actually going to run the data back in. So basically what this process did for us is it truncated the data inside the, the, the uh, data warehouse. So I have a truncation script that does that directly from Jitterbit in my process. I then extract that data from AX and the SQL Server, uh, in this case our data warehouse. Uh, and then the last step that took place was it actually took that data from AWS, uh, my AWS SQL Server, into uh, Excel. So if I go back over here, let me go into my... Uh, there we go. There's my Tableau. So this is my data coming from my Excel. So basically, this is just customer data, um, and you know I, I have a limited view of Tableau because I'm just using Tableau Public. Uh, but you know, given that you have a, a full full fledged Tableau, you can uh, import that in as TD files, Excel, whatever you need to put that in as, and uh, take a look at that in Tableau in this case. So I have two views, and one of those is customers by state. And so what that did, does is it actually segments those by state. So this is the data that came over in Excel, and it was imported into Tableau. And we can see those uh, split up by state in this case. And then also there is a, uh, a uh, gallery view or a picture view of that data, so you can actually see which businesses are in which state in this case, based on more of a, a picture view of that, uh, of that data in this case. So next thing I'll do, let me log into here. Now this is the, the actual login to the cloud platform. And I'll put in my password and I'll click login. So this is the Jitterbit 
uh, Web Management Console. This is where, as we ran things, and, and this is the first thing I wanted to show you, um, this is the job that actually ran. So as we look here, uh, you can see the job actually ran and succeeded. Um, and this is where you'll actually maintain and monitor uh, any of those jobs and, and operations that you're actually running in the Jitterbit Studio. So I just wanted to show this briefly. Um, but the main thing I wanted to do was actually go back and create a new operation. So one of the things I like to talk to people about is that you, know, you can see here that this is a, a integration that was built. And you can look at it and go, great, that's, that's fine and dandy, but did you spend three hours coding to build this? You know, what does it actually take to use Jitterbit? to build these integrations and build them quickly. So what I'll do is I'll actually walk through the wizard in this case uh, that basically builds uh, something similar to here as far as moving that data from, like in this case, I'll just build a, a operation that, that pulls the data from SQL Server and then actually writes it to a uh, flat file. Um, and I'll do that from scratch. So it's very similar to here. It's just not the Excel version that we need from Tableau. So I'll go ahead and right click here. I'll say a new operation. So this is going to build me a new integration. I'll go ahead and click transform. So I'm going to do a transform here. And I'll call this database to flat file. Okay. So now that I've got that, um, you can see here I've got my sources and targets. I'm actually going to use my pre-existing database connection here. So I can just drag that over. I'll go ahead and fix the layout so it's nice and pretty, like that. Um, and then I'll go ahead and build a transform, and I'm going to write to a flat file directly from there. So I'll go into the transform, and I'm going to say create a new transform. And I'll just call this db to flat file again. And now all I need to do is point to the target. So I'm just going to say text in this case, configure to use a database. Okay. Oops, something's not right. Sorry, guys. I clicked on the wrong thing. Okay. Let's try that again. Okay. Um, actually, I'll just use this pre-existing one that I've got here. So this is the same one that I was going to build. And then we'll go ahead and build my target. So I think I've got a target. If not, we'll build it from scratch. Okay. So um, what this shows is this is actually moving data from SQL Server into a new flat file format. Uh, I'll go ahead and create that flat file, create a new target. I'll call this, uh, what, what are we doing, customer data. And I'll say, I'm going to write that to temp storage. So on our server, we can actually write that to a temp storage. It's basically the same thing as a CSV. I'll go ahead and test that and then click OK. Click Save. And then I'll basically map that up. Now I can auto map, so there's an auto map button here, or I can drag and drop those over. I'm going to hit auto map first, and it'll actually pull in those. So say I had more fields here, then I could basically just drag and drop that across uh, into my mapping. So that's basically how you build an operation. Um, let me save that off. Uh, and that's how you would basically build an operation. So when you look back at our original script here, uh, you can see there's three steps basically. So that's how you build a step. And then you basically just join that together with an orchestration. You can put an error in there, uh, error handling, and uh, that pretty much uh, completes an orchestration for you, for example. Um, and we have no limit on that orchestration. You can run one step all the way up to as many steps as you need to for an orchestration. Or you can build multiple orchestrations that call each other and things like that. So it really just depends upon what you need to do. So that's how the studio works. That's how the platform works. Let me go back over the platform. I'll briefly show you the cloud. So this is actually the cloud uh, web management console. This is your administrative console. And this you can get to from anywhere in the world in the cloud. Um, the, the studio actually runs as a client uh, at present. And then you deploy those to the cloud. So as I moved that data and actually kicked off those jobs, it was deploying and running that to the cloud at the same time for me. Um, we are actually working on a new web interface. Um, uh, within the next nine months uh, to a year, we'll actually be uh, pushing that out to the web, um, and uh, Studio uh, will no longer exist. It will all be done on the web in the, in the next six months to a year. 
So um, ultimately, basically, this platform, uh, you know, you can manage your activities, you can check your notifications. As, uh, as Lee mentioned before, the citizen integrator, um, this is a new function that we just released recently, which is really built around the business analyst. And, and the idea there is that what I showed you in studio, what I showed you in studio um, is uh, basically the building of the integration. And then citizen integrated, you can push it out to the cloud uh, specific to those business analysts, and then they can manage those as they need to. Um, projects, these are all the projects that we built. So what you saw in studio is really a project with a bunch of integrations built. Environments is a very important piece. So say you have a standard software lifecycle, this will be your uh, dev test prod environments. You can manage those directly through the platform here. We don't charge you for environments. Many of our competitors do. Um, and it's a really big selling point for us because we can really manage those around your needs specific to whatever your software lifecycle is. Um, the agents is the agents that actually run. We have cloud and on-premise agents, so that's just basically how we get to the data and manage that. Uh, organizations, this is where you actually manage your people. So if you want to add uh, folks to the organization, we don't charge for users also. Uh, and then the last thing is our API management. So anything that is going to be real-time, say you need to move that data in real-time, you know, opportunities from one location to another and create sales orders, build those real-time real, real -time scenarios. We do have that in the platform. So with the custom API, we can expose an API specific to those jobs or operations that I showed you uh, inside of Studio and uh, push those out through an API and basically manage those that way so you actually have event-driven processes uh, for real-time scenarios. So that's pretty much the platform. So if we go back to to what I showed uh, for the uh, slide. Um, basically, we move some data from uh, customer data from AX all the way through the process to Tableau and took a look at that in Tableau. We wireframed up or looked at integrations um, built inside the studio from scratch. Uh, you could see within a matter of minutes, I was able to build that wireframe that up and then I could start building my, you know, my data type conversions and anything else I need to do in my mappings. And then uh, we actually took a look at the Harmony platform, which is our administrative console to actually manage your processes overall. That's all I have to show, um, and I will hand it back uh, to you, Lee. Thanks. All right, thanks, Scott. And um, again, great uh, presentation. I see you're in high demand there <laughs> with the calls coming in uh, while we're presenting. And uh, we'll go right to questions and answers here, Q&A session. If um, you have any questions, Feel free to ask them using the questions area of the GoToWebinar uh, interface there. And we'll start off with really the first question, Scott, if we still got you in the line, which is uh, how do you do error handling? I went back on mute. Um, sure. So let me pull my screen back up again, and I'll show you. Let me know you can see me. So error handling um, is really done through the studio. And... Let me get back over here. So basically, it's just another operation, or you can do notifications, things like that. So say you want to send an email to uh, your admins, for example. You can say, on failure, send an email. And with that email, you can create an email that basically takes parameters uh, from the actual error and pushes that out to an email and sends that out. Or you can actually do operations. So the operations that you see here that are in the orchestration itself uh, you can also build or, uh, operations to do whatever you need to do for error handling. So if you have records that error out and you want to catch those, you can push those uh, in a secondary uh, operation on failure to uh, you know, a database, in a transaction table. Uh, you can push those out to a flat file. Whatever you want to do with those records, um, you can basically manage it that way. So that you see here this little exclamation mark. Um, that is on failure, so if anything does fail, it goes out to my cancel out the error or the operation here and stops the process for me in this case. But we can pretty much manage any type of error handling you need. Um, and then you can see here that all three are actually connected to that. So anytime any one of these steps fail, it's going to error out to that. And you can chain these events together also to manage error handling as you need to. So. Okay, great for that quick walk. And thanks for pulling the screen up again, uh, putting you on the spot there. Uh, we have a question from uh, uh, Francisco who's on the line also. 
uh, which is can there be uh, integrations where the function can be run on a scheduled basis? Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, that's the majority of what we do. Um, that's sort of our, our bread and butter. But then also, like I mentioned, we do have the ability to do real time scenarios. But say I wanted to actually schedule this, and that's one thing I didn't show, guys. Sorry about that. I'll right click here and I'll say schedule, select schedule, and I'll just create a new one because this project doesn't have any. Uh, I'll just say new schedule, and then we can get as granular as you want to um, within with your scheduling. So daily, weekly, monthly. If it's daily, uh, you know, for example, I could set it to 1 a.m. Maybe weekly on Saturday at 1 a.m., which is a fairly common one. Uh, we can also go down, go down to every few minutes. So um, theoretically, you can actually run this at zero to one minutes, which is almost as close to real time as you can get. Um, you know, with the caveat that, of course, as you try to write those. Um, you know, if you don't give a little bit of time in between, you still have to accommodate for, um, you know, what ran since the last run and things like that. So if you're running millions of records and try to run that every minute, uh, you know, you could put yourself into conflicts. But suffice it to say, you know, I could set something to run every 10 minutes, scheduled uh, weekly, monthly, or hourly, how to run into. So. Okay, great. Uh, and, well, there was actually a second part of Francisco's question, but I'll go ahead and address that because there were several questions about that. And that's... Uh, regarding some of the other platforms and apps that we connect to. Uh, you, uh, Francisco, you had asked about Salesforce customs op custom objects. Uh, we do, we can do the integrations and mapping to all of that. Um, really, all your major CRMs, uh, the other ERPs, uh, HR applications, some of the other ones, even like retail platforms, uh, you know, Magento, Shopify, and others. Uh, there, we, there's a very long list or, you know, a large portfolio that we have uh, that we can connect to um, very easily through Harmony. Uh, I would recommend, you know, I have your questions here. If you have a particular endpoint that you're asking about, feel free to chime in here um, with the questions or in the chat. Otherwise, you know, you can contact us directly because there, uh, there's a very long list we can go through. But uh, you, we are known for Salesforce and other CRMs, and uh, we definitely can do that as well. Uh, this was a, a, a smaller group also. I'll actually close with one last question that Nathan was asking because uh, it is somewhat pertinent to this, which is, uh, do we also work with uh, uh, the rest of the Dy Microsoft Dynamics suite? Uh, Scott, yes. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, yes. So, yeah, I mean, we work with, I would say, the majority of it. What we don't have a pre-built connector for, we can still, and this is one thing I, I wanted to mention, uh, we can still utilize REST or SOAP connections uh, for pretty much any endpoint on the planet. Um, but we do have those pre-built connectors for uh, AX, CRM, uh, Great Plains. And then, like I said, anything else on the on the dynamic stack that we don't have an actual connector for, uh, we can connect through standard web uh, web services in that case. So, okay, great. Uh, and uh, we're at the uh, half hour point here. So, uh, what I'll go ahead and do is uh, wrap this up uh, for you guys. Uh, and just a reminder that if you are interested in other uh, webinar sessions that we have here, uh, whether it's technical or any of the business use case stuff. Uh, we have them on an ongoing basis pretty much every week. Next week, we actually will be presenting a healthcare scenario one with connecting e ERP, uh, sorry, EHRs and EMRs to uh, Health Cloud, uh, the Salesforce health um, interface that they have. Uh, then we'll be doing these um, every month where it's sort of a deep dive into things like our Harmony Studio and other sort of platforms, endpoints, or anything that might be in your technology stack. So feel free to contact us. Uh, keep tuning in to these uh, jitterbit webinars and uh, thanks for joining and thanks Scott for the presentation. Absolutely. Thanks. Okay. Have a good day everyone. Bye -bye.